Okay, for number nine, we have to look at uh, four different statements. So, statement one, we have the sequence one over n from n equals one to infinity is bounded and convergent. I'm going to use some shorthand here for these. So, remember, these are sequences, not series. So we're not talking about the sums here. So is this bounded? Yes, as you continue on, this just gets closer and closer to zero. It's bounded by zero. It doesn't uh, increase without bound or decrease without bound. It gets closer to a particular number. So therefore, it is bounded. Is this sequence convergent? Yes, because it goes to zero. So this is true for these two here. So the difference between bounded and convergence is going to come to light in the next one. So for number two, we have the series, or the sequence, sorry, cosine pi of n, cosine of pi n, n equals 1 to infinity. So again, that one is, says is bounded and divergent. So let's think about this here. Is this bounded? Well, let's think about what happens. When you plug in n equals 1, we get uh, cosine of pi, which is negative 1. And when we plug in n equals 2, we get cosine of 2 pi, which is 1. And this is just going to alternate. It's going to keep going negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1, on and on. Is this bounded then? Yes, because it's bounded by negative 1 and 1. It's always going to be in between, and in this case, in fact, equal to either one of those. So this is bounded. Is it divergent? Yes, because it doesn't, this consistently alternates all the way through infinity. So therefore, this does not converge to a specific number. It keeps going back and forth between two numbers. So it is both bounded and divergent. So this is true. Number three. We have the sequence negative 1 to the n sine of n pi from n equals 1 to infinity. So we're saying this is bounded divergent. So what you should recognize here is that sine of n pi is always zero. Any, any integer multiple of pi, when you use sine of that, you're going to get zero. So this sequence is just zeros all the way through. Then is it bounded? Clearly yes. Is it divergent? No, because this converges to zero. If every term in the sequence is zero, then it converges to zero. So this is incorrect. This is convergent. And finally, number four, so in this case we just have if some general sequence of a sub n's, n equals 1 to infinity, so is decreasing and positive, so it's a decreasing sequence with positive terms only, then limit as n goes to infinity a sub n equals 0. So this is saying if you have any decreasing positive series, sequence of numbers, sorry, <laughs> any decreasing positive sequence of numbers, then its limit is going to be 0. That's definitely not true. Um, so you could have, for example, I'll give you one example. What if you had 1 over n plus 1, that's your uh, sequence. So is this decreasing? Yes, because when we plug in 1, we get 2, but every subsequent n becomes 3 halves, um, you know, 4 thirds, on and on. It keeps getting smaller and smaller, and those are always positive, but it's getting closer and closer to 1, and it's kind of like curving down, if you think of it as a, like a graph. It's curving down, and it's getting closer to 1, and it converges to 1. So 
this is decreasing, this is positive, but its limit is definitely not zero, its limit is one. So this is not necessarily true. Just because it's decreasing and positive doesn't mean that its limit has to be zero. So this one would be only uh, choices one and two, uh, which then is answer choice C.